hey what's going on guys first step up here welcome to another video in this video i'll be reviewing the samsung galaxy a32 the successor to the a31 the samsung galaxy a32 has been an interesting device for the past few weeks that i've been using it even though it brought some mixed feelings too so in this video i'll be sharing my thoughts what i've discovered and my overall experience about it with you guys so to help you guys make that purchase decision The Samsung Galaxy A32 is a major upgrade from its predecessor and it is true that less expensive phones these days are getting good. The Samsung Galaxy A32 is no exception to that claim. It has improved in so many ways even though I feel it is still too expensive for what it has to offer. At 113,500 Naira or approximately $300, I feel like the competition offers something that is way better. Price aside, let's talk about the awesome design and build quality of this device. The Samsung Galaxy A32 is pretty, especially from the rear. The awesome blue color that I have here is just beautiful. I like the round dot design of the camera placement. It is very distinctive in a unique way. I personally think it looks better than the Samsung Galaxy A52. But what do you guys think? Between the A52 and A32, which do you think looks better? Comment down below. The device is made totally from plastic. When you're considering a device at this price point, that is what you get. In this case, it feels well made and attractive. Since it is made from plastic, it should be able to survive accidental drop more than glass. Inside the box, the A32 comes with the device itself, a 15 watt fast charging brick, a USB Type-C cable, some paperwork, a plastic silicone case and a SIM ejector tool. If you notice, Samsung didn't include the earpiece this time. I don't know the reason for the omission. I guess it is best known to them alone. On the right side of the device, we've got the power button and the volume rocker keys. To the left, houses the SIM tray that can take dual nano SIM and a micro SD card. At the bottom, we've got the headphone jack, a microphone, a USB Type C charging port, and the speaker grill. On top, houses another microphone. On the rear, houses the quad camera setup and the flashlight. Moving on to the front, the A32 comes with a 6.4 inch 90 Hz Super AMOLED Full HD Plus display that is very sharp with vivid colors. The resolution is 1080p by 2400 and the pixels density is capped at 411. The display is very sharp and bright for its class thanks to the 800 nits of peak brightness. However, I find the Infinity U notch to be too intrusive and it also looks dated. Other than that, the display is more than okay for its price. Okay, let's talk specification. The Samsung Galaxy A32 comes bundled with the MediaTek Halo G80 processor, 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. One UI 3.1 is on board on top of Android 11. Now listen to this. Performance is the bottleneck of this device. This is not a fast device at all. For the most part, if you're not doing anything too intensive, performance is just going to be fine. But the moment you begin to push it a little further, performance suffers. Most times, the A32 feels like a device with a 60Hz display bundled with a weak processor. You rarely feel the presence of 90Hz on this device. I feel like the CPU and GPU is not too capable of running all the animations and high graphics of the A32. Because most times, it hangs and stutters a lot. I'm not saying the faster refresh rate is pointless because most times you will definitely notice it. If you look at the benchmark scores here, it does confirm that the A32 isn't too competitive. I'm not going to call it a slow device either because most times the 90Hz refresh rate does make for a mostly fluid experience. However, there are occasional hiccups when navigating through the UI, switching between apps and general multitasking. Gaming is fine on low graphics settings, but it doesn't offer the best gaming experience. One UI packs new features and it should be able to get at least 3 years of Android updates as promised by Samsung. My major concern is how it will fare along the 3 years update cycle considering its current performance. If this device was priced around 80,000 Naira or $230 or if I wasn't spoiled by what the competition offers at even lower rates, I would have given it another thought. The fingerprint scanner on here is okay for unlocking the device, but it is not fast at all. And I feel like the overall performance is to be blamed here. 
Face Unlock is also present, but due to the nature of Android implementation of Face Unlock using the front facing camera, it makes it not a secure option to use. So I would advise you to forget about it if security is one of the things you prioritize on a smartphone. Okay, so moving on to the camera aspect, the A32 uses the image quality to make up for its somewhat poor performance. The A32 comes with a 64 megapixels main center, an 8 megapixels ultra wide center, a 5 megapixels macro lens, and a 5 megapixels depth center. Then on the selfie side of things, it has a 20 megapixels center. The A32 camera takes excellent looking images when the lighting condition is good. By default, it shoots a 16 megapixels image and details are present. It comes out clean with saturated colors. It produces less noise when the scene is well lit or in daylight. And the high dynamic range is very decent. You hardly tell the difference between the standard 16 megapixels image with the 64 megapixels ones unless you are a type that likes to zoom in to find extra details. That aside, the 8 megapixels ultra wide shooter delivers decent images. There's a fair bit of noise if you zoom in, but the level of details is okay, mostly for landscape images. Dynamic range 2 isn't that bad for a mid range device. Color saturation is not as prominent as on the main camera, but the overall image is okay. Low light photos are disappointing coming out of the camera. They are generally soft and noisy. While the dynamic range is relatively hard to find, you will end up with dark shadows missing the details. So always rely on the flashlight for low light photos. Portrait shots are okay as well and edge detection is good for the most part. It is nowhere near perfect but it is decent. The 20 megapixel selfie camera takes reasonable photos. Saturation level is on point and skin tones are sometimes warm and I will say it is natural for most Samsung selfie camera. Dynamic range is good thanks to auto high dynamic range though it can be a hit or miss sometimes but once it gets it right, the result tends to come out clean. Portrait selfies looks good too and for the most part, it gets the job done. On the video aspect, the A32 can only shoot in 1080p 30 frames per second. EIS or electronic image stabilization is available but it isn't as good as what is found on the A52. However, the footage looks okay for a 1080p device. What's up guys, so this is a front facing camera on the Samsung Galaxy A32. It can only shoot in 1080p 30 frames per second. And for the most part, I think the footage looks okay. Although there's a little bit of high dynamic range issues on the sky. It is completely blown away. But for the most part, it looks okay. So do let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Alright? The Samsung Galaxy A32 has a 5000mAh battery inside. For a mid-ranger, the battery life is very impressive. The 90Hz refresh rate plays a huge deal in drilling the battery as compared to its predecessor. But the Galaxy A32 still manages to deliver excellent results for battery life. Running the phone in 90Hz mode on a moderate use, you can comfortably use the device for a whole day without you needing to recharge, which is very impressive. The A32 comes with a 15W fast charger out of the box and I was able to charge it from 0 to 100% in 2 hours 25 minutes straight. It is not bad for a device with a 5000mAh battery. The speaker on the A32 is a down firing type so when playing games you can accidentally block the sound. The overall sound quality is decent for a mid range device even though it is not too loud. For the pros and cons of this device, the pros has to be the 90Hz refresh rate, the excellent battery life, the awesome display and a clean user interface. For the cons, it has to be the underwhelming performance, the slow fingerprint sensor, no 4K option when shooting video and a very high price tag. Don't get me wrong, the A32 is an impressive device with lots of features. But when you look at what the competition is bringing to the table, it makes the A32 become dead on arrival. The A32 lacks what the competition offers at a lesser amount or similar amount. It has flaws that a whole lot of people might consider to be a deal breaker for them. I feel like the most contributing factor to the poor performance has to be the weak processor. But you know, being a Samsung device, you are granted to get at least 3 years up the circle. However, before that time, you might be more than tired of the device already. So that has been it guys, my thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy A32. Thank you so much for watching and kindly share your thoughts with me down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next one.